Um, this is a podcast uh, where I want to tackle the question, who is God? Now this may seem like a religious podcast, but it is not. Ever since I figured out the things that I've been able to figure out, I, I realized that God is not a religious concept. And in this um, podcast, what I want to do is to shed some light on that statement, because the statement, uh, it may seem that the only place people encounter the idea of God is in religion. So how can you say God is not a religious concept? Uh, first of all, I want to <laughs> pay respect to the magnitude of this question, who is God? Because I believe that it is the, cent- it is the central question of humanity. It is the... I'd say it's the first question, the only question, and the most important question, because if we truly believe, as some of the, uh, the belief systems of religion uh, suggest, that the universe sprang into being by, as an act of creation, and that human beings also sprang into being as an act of creation, then nothing is more important than figuring out or understanding exactly what this act of creation really is and who is behind it. Every other question pales into insignificance if you think about it, you know? So, I feel that the best way to tackle this question is to... Now, this is just... My podcasts are freelance narratives. I just, you know... There's no written material. There's nothing. I just... So I I consider that to be my own style, you know. I don't edit my podcasts. I just I just think about something and you know and I begin to speak on it. And um, for a long time I've been wanting to do this podcast on who is God. And uh, today I say I fi- I can say I finally summoned up the uh, the courage um, to do so. Now, first and foremost, disclaimer, I have no religious belief, so to speak. I mean, I was born into a Christian family, a Catholic family and all that. But over the years, it never really stuck to me. And I always felt that it was more to the entire religious edifice. I always felt that there was something there that wasn't, you know... I have always felt that there is some type of secret behind it all. And um, so I didn't really get hooked on the, you know, the literal interpretations of anything. I just saw it as some type of drama. Uh, you know, I knew that it, if there was truth in it, then the truth had to be deeper than this, because this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And uh, so that was my attitude towards religion for a long, long time. Now, when my research started and I started to piece things together... I realized that there was more to it. In fact, I realized the religion is like having... If you take the entire notion of quantum mechanics, the entire study of physics, for instance, you see, uh, religion would be like handing over a very famous quantum mechanics textbook to someone from 5,000 years ago. Now, I'm not saying that the writings in the Bible or the Quran or whatever book you want to talk about or the Torah I'm not saying that these are equated to some type of physical science what I'm saying is is a lot deeper than that now the there is nothing in the any of the texts that I've seen that can be interpreted literally but all of them are speaking about the emergence of a universe and of humankind as an act of will of a creator. So in this podcast, I want to begin to shed light on all that because it sounds, you know, hopefully by the time you finish listening to what I have to say, uh, you would begin to see those writings as, you know, as narratives for kids. It's narratives for people who are too young to really understand what 
is really I mean you, I mean the, the, for instance the modern day Bible is a jumble of so many texts and so many narratives often conflicting and some of them in, written in different styles well the modern consensus is that all those books are from different periods in time and from different authors and so you have different perspectives but they all describe the effect of a creator God from different perspectives and different perspectives in space and different perspectives in time so um, you know make of that what you will but in this particular podcast what I want to do is I want to go straight for the jugular who is God okay now some people come to the conclusion that oh there's no such thing it's just a figment of man's imagination and all that well they've managed to put uh, two sentences that are <laughs> that are very opposite to each other in one, two phrases that are very opposite to each other in one sentence. You see, from the perspective of organized complexity and our understanding of what a conceptual space is, in the beginning was nothing. Doesn't mean that we we cannot imagine what nothing means or what nothing implies because even when we think about nothing we think about nothing within a container of some kind the container itself is something so when we think about nothing we are thinking about nothing in the perspective of our human understanding which actually exists so our consciousness exists and when we think of nothing when we form, try to form mental images of nothing we can't because we cannot negate our own consciousness so that to be able to get a proper understanding of nothing. Now, this means that whenever you close your eyes or take a moment to yourself and you try to imagine what nothing means, you, you cannot do it. It's impossible. In the absence of everything, there is you. So, when you try to imagine nothing and try to imagine as much nothing as nothingness as possible, all you are left with is you. So, to truly understand what nothing means when it says the universe was created out of nothing, then you need to be, you, what that implies is that there must be a total, absolute negation of yourself. And that's not possible. Okay? So, nothing is the source. It is this nothing, right? If we're going to look for God, to say who is God, then we must go to that nothing to inquire about the nature of nothing. And like I've just described in the last couple of minutes, uh, that's pretty impossible. Now, the, the general idea behind God is that he is the source, he or she, or however you want to describe him. I'll use a he because I'm a man and I'm speaking from that perspective. God is the sum total of all existence and beyond. Because all existence, the structure of space-time itself, came from him. So, in a sense, existence came from God. doesn't mean that God is existence. Existence is something that has come from him. So like people say, well, how is this even possible if you're not going to go religious? If, you're not, if, if this is not going to be based on some type of religious belief? And I say, if you understand what a concept space is, that's what we've been trying to do in all the, the, the podcasts and the recordings we've done regarding the nature of organized complexity. We always refer back to this concept space. It is, it is not the space in the sense of the word like we understand what a space is. But it is a space in the sense that there is something. But that something has no space and it has no time. And what it looks like to us is a concept. But the concepts are not God. Because concepts are something, even though they have no space-time attached to them. The very idea of the number one, right, is a concept. But God is not a concept. Concepts came from God. Now, 
some people say that if you if you can argue like that then you can argue almost anything